Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PlayStation 2, Nintendo Switch, the Steam Deck, Sega, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on PC with Yuzu, and Yuzu got a couple of real nice updates. Mainline version 13.42 improves performance on various games, including Metroid Prime Remastered, Shin Megami Tensei, 3D Mario All-Stars, Super Mario Galaxy, and a whole bunch more. Mainline version 13.43 fixes Metroid Prime Remaster's audio that would crack randomly and crash Yuzu and it also fixes some textures in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. And mainline version 1344, which literally just released, has some performance improvements, especially with CPU video decoding. If you haven't updated Yuzu in a while, now might be a good time to update. It's been getting better in leaps and bounds, and the improvements keep coming. And speaking about improvements, next up we're talking about PlayStation 2 emulation on PC with PCSX2 and PCSX2 has been incredibly active today. If we go on ahead and take a look at PCSX2's website, we can see that there were eight different nightly builds today. So one of the things covered in these updates is a fix here when you're swapping renderers. Previously in certain games, stuff like Futurama would kind of break a little bit for rendering if you swapped it between hardware and software renderers and it looks like this new feature may stop that. And there was also a real nice quality of life update added in the form of mouse over dialogues. Mouse over dialogues have been added to stuff like internal resolution, vertical stretch cropping, TV shader, and GS dump compression options. If you haven't updated PCSX2 in a while, I do recommend picking up the latest version. If you've recently updated it, you can update it straight from the app. If you can't, head to PCSX2.net, click on downloads, Scroll down to where you see nightly releases and pick up the latest version there. It's far more updated than the latest stable. Next up, we're talking about an iOS emulator, Touch HLE, where HLE stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or High Level Emulator, depending on how you want to interpret that. We've talked about this one in the past, but Touch HLE just got a brand new update. So at the time of filming, the latest update here is version 0.1.1. We've got some fixes, some improvements, some performance updates, and some usability updates. In terms of performance, this is a big one. The emulated CPU can now access memory via a more direct, faster path. This can dramatically improve performance and reduce CPU and energy use in some cases by as much as 25%, and .IPA files can now be opened directly. Now it is worth pointing out that Touch HLE isn't for newer versions of iOS. At the time of filming, it's only version 2, but it is available for Mac OS, Windows, and it's free and open source. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Feel free to check it out. Moving on, and we're talking about Libre Shader. We talked about this one last month, but we've got a brand new update here. Version 0.1.0 just released. At a really high level, Libre Shader is basically something that would allow a standalone emulator to use RetroArch shaders. I don't know of any standalone emulators that are currently taking advantage of this, but I'm curious to see if any do. Moving on, and we're talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with Spine, and it appears that there's a brand new GUI launcher for Spine called Spine GTK. Interestingly enough, Spine GTK does require Docker in order to work. There are installation instructions right on this GitHub, and if you're curious about this one, I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Spine GTK is open source and free. Moving on, and we're talking about Sega, and it appears that Sega is doing a nice thing for its employees in terms of money. So according to this announcement, which I will leave a link to in the description below, Sega seems to be raising the base salary of its employees, at least some of them, by 30% per month. On average here, it says the annual salary increase rate is about 15%. Big win for Sega. And speaking about big wins, last up here we're talking about the Steam Deck, and the Steam Deck beta client just got a really big update. Now aside from standard bug fixes and performance improvements, they've added a brand new feature here that I think a lot of people are going to like. Local network game transfers. This new feature allows Steam users to copy existing Steam game installation and update files from one PC to another over a local area network without having to download and install from a Steam content server on the internet. So if you've downloaded and installed a game on your PC and you wanted to transfer that to your Steam Deck, you absolutely can. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. 
hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.